I was waiting outside because I was going to the cemetery, and an attorney who has some, does some work for my brothers came out. He gave his apologies to me, and he said, I went through eight grades and then through high school in a Catholic school, so I know a lot about the Catholic Church, and I found out very early in my life that the best time to leave church is during communion. That's what he said. He had slipped out. You see, he did not practice any religion, I presume, or surely not the Catholic religion, but he did not blush to tell me that that is the time to make your getaway during communion. And he also said that during some part of this ceremony, a large number of my nieces came up. Now, I do not know what this was for. I have about 15 or 16 nieces, and I presume that they did something. Well, the trouble is that one of those nieces ran away with a man and now is living with a man, not her husband. But she participated in this also. You see, in the new religion, you're not supposed to talk about these things because it is impolite. It is tasteless. You're supposed to overlook any of these moral matters because what is important is the person. The human being has such great value that no matter what he has done, no matter what he believes, he is dear to God. And on that basis will he be saved because God loves him. God will take care of him. No matter what he does with his life, no matter how disobedient, how independent. And that is what we are dealing with. I'm not going to extend these remarks much further, but I, I do want to make this comment. While being with my family on such an occasion as this, I was aware of a certain pressure against myself. I was aware that I was simply something of a round pig in a square hole. I simply did not fit. There was no place for me. That's not important. What is important is that I was aware of the fact that one has constantly to be on his guard at these occasions lest he do something to compromise his faith or to suggest that it's all right what they do. The situation is, you might say, so arranged that one has constantly to ask oneself, now, am I showing approval for this? Am I suggesting that this is lovely? That this is religion? And that is what we may not do. Because no matter how affecting all this is, no matter how uh, touching, most of it is not religion at all. All it is is a mutual consolation. And it is a, an encouragement to love each other, not in Christ, but to love each other. And to pat everyone on the back and say how wonderful each other is. I have to tell you that my attitude is that one must fulfill his duties, but one must not stay in this kind of company very long because... Before one knows it, one finds himself drawn to it, and one begins to question his own viewpoint or his own positions. I recall to you, my dear people, these words of our Lord. <clears throat> if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, Yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. 
Next verse is, and whatsoever doth, and whosoever doth not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now those two verses are related because it is a cross that one must carry to resist one's family. Our Lord does not want us to hate our parents or our children or our relatives at all. But he uses that word to emphasize the danger. And he wants us to understand that we have to treat the whole world as if it were hateful if our faith is in danger of compromise, if the church is going to suffer, and if our own souls are in jeopardy. And we have to turn our back on everyone for the sake of our integrity of faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.